Hello everyone, my name is Felix. I'm an investor at Ananda Impact Ventures. We are a leading European impact fund based in Munich and London, managing around uh, 200 million euros across four funds and, uh, as I said, one of the first impact funds in, in Europe. We are a general fund, uh, early stage fund, so pre-seed until Series A, uh, general in that sense that all companies, all startups that address a societal problem um, fit in our, in our scope that can be healthcare, elderly care, diversity and inclusion, and that's why we are here today, obviously sustainability. Um, one of our portfolio companies uh, was already introduced, Thomas, the CEO, is sitting next to me, Aurora Tech, and it's also about um, the same as uh, Modern Meadows and what Catherine talked about, it's, it's about the combination of scalability and sustainability, and that's what we found so attractive as investors. Because before I talk more about that, um, please welcome Thomas as well. Thomas is CEO and founder. Um, please tell us a little bit more on what you are doing at Aurora Tech. Thank you. It's very cool to be here in this very important conference on sustainability, actually. So our vision is firm intelligence for sustainable earth. But what does it mean? We take the, so we do thermal infrared imaging uh, from, from satellites, uh, so from space, and thermal infrared is actually the temperature. So we measure the temperature several times a day down to, down to real time at the end um, to provide different solutions in climate change adaptation and mitigation. And you have heard that already a few times now, the word temperature. We will dive into that a little bit um, more. But first of all, uh, last week there was a big announcement on your side, uh, funding round, 15 million euros. Congratulations on that. What excites you the most about the current funding? Thank you. Yeah, what, what excites me most, uh, there, there's many things that excite me, but uh, most exciting and I think you mentioned over here is also we're the only space startup uh, out there, so uh, yeah, a startup with having assets in space, which actually has now the second impact fund in our portfolio, in our cap table. So we're welcoming Edafone on our cap table. Um, they're focusing on biodiversity and decarbonization, and that again plays very, very nicely with our vision and our targets. And on this, on this link, now getting a little bit deeper and into the, into the nitty-gritty of Aurora Tech, so what's the link between the temperature that you're measuring in general and decarbonization? So, actually everything in climate change is somehow connected to temperature. Whether it's a forest fire that's super hot, uh, whether it's emissions from, from a building, from, from chimneys, or whether it's just a climate change that heats everything up. I mean, we're not hitting the 1.5 degree goal, and we are always um, reading it in the newspaper on the day after. And we say, yeah, you cannot change what you don't measure. And so we take the Earth's temperature from space, real-time high resolution, um, to actually drive this adaptation, adaptation and mitigation. And do you have some use cases where you can use that? The big question is always firm infrared imaging, or uh, temperature images, why? Um, this is a normal satellite image, so I see you're taking pictures, the, the cool thing is coming soon. Um, you see this, this spot here, some agricultural fields. Um, there's another spot, um, you see some, some dark forest area. Let's look at it in firm infrared imagery. So, Suddenly, um, the fields have different shades than before. They, it actually, the darker the field is, the more moisture is in the field, the more water is evaporating. So it's very important for, if we don't have enough water as a source to fairly distribute it, for example. On the other hand, um, on the left hand side, you see this, uh, this very hot spot, so this very bright spot in the forest, which was before very dark. Um, this means, yeah, it's very hot. There could be still a fire. It could be very risky that it burns soon. So um, this is only visible through, from infrared and therefore needed for actually this climate <laughs> change adaptation and, and to also mitigate this. And yeah, there um, you are a space tech company, but there are not only satellites up there. There is also software using the data, analyzing it, and then providing us with, with insights. And the first, um, what Marco already mentioned, the first 
um, software product on that end is around wildfire on detection, monitoring, managing. Can you uh, tell us more on this side, what you're doing there? Yes, yeah, so the, the, the first area we entered is forest fire detection and monitoring. And I want to highlight one, one fire we also imaged with our camera this, this summer. So that's already every picture. And what we do there is uh, also fire perimeter tracking or firefront monitoring. And this is very important because if you look at this fire, it's a very typical fire in California, but it, it happens also in South America, in many regions all over the globe. And we had a burnt area of 2,000 hectares there. It was burning for three weeks and was costing $16.3 million of dollars in just the suppression of the fire, um, not looking at uh, reforestation costs, for example. And with our data, actually, we, we enabled the firefighters, in this case, to, to generate the right um, guidance for attacking the fire, so to, to suppress it faster, quicker, and more efficiently. And then if you think about that side, so 2,000 hectares burned forest, that roughly correlates to 700,000 tons of CO2 emitted. It's crazy. So if you think about or if you are able to support firefighters by slashing that area maybe in half so that it's just, uh, just 1,000 hectares burned, bad enough still, but you also slash CO2 emissions in, in half. And that's what we, from a commercial perspective, but also from an impact perspective, found so, um, so interesting um, to, to invest in. So huge, huge impact on CO2, but also it's about adapting to climate risk, which we all become sadly more and more aware and of and affected by. And this combination attack, attacking both, so reducing emissions and that adaptation to, to climate change. This is in the wildfire area, um, super interesting. Um, you said these are your images. Uh, there's another big milestone from the beginning of this year. You launched your first satellite, and this is, for any satellite company, a huge milestone to show that it's possible, that you are possible to operate this, uh, to operate a satellite. What have you learned from, from this? So we were also starting to compare our sensor with other sensors. Um, and what you see there, that our sensor is actually really playing at the top class level. So the, uh, now the, the text is dark, but on the very left, you see our sensor. And, and all the other three are uh, public sensors, so from, from NASA and other instruments. And we're really, really comparable. And, and still, um, these pictures are taken from a commercial, no, not from a commercial, but from an institutional satellite at the size of a big car or a near, nearly a small truck. And our sensors are the size of a shoebox. That means our sensors are super, super, super cheap. And therefore, we can produce many of them. And the first time, not only have a good data quality, but can provide frequent, real-time observation of effects like uh, forest fires and alarm from them. And with that real-time uh, monitoring and that scalability, what, what else can you do? Also very interesting is it, is it to look at urban heat emissions. For example, here at Los Angeles, um, here again, also uh, 500 kilograms, so a very expensive NASA research sensor taking one picture of Los Angeles. And it's super comparable with, with our sensor, which has two kilograms. So again, a few hundred times cheaper. And what you see in the picture is you see that which, urban, which areas have bad insulation, or sometimes can even scale down to the house, which houses has bad insulation which power plants are, are driving also emissions in the city or, or doing uh, c contribute to heat in the city. And many cities are currently scared that they are not livable in the next 10 years, so that in 10 years uh, you don't want to be in Athens, for example, anymore. And so these cities like Athens, Miami, and so on, they install chief heat offices now um, to actually build up this climate resilience. And our data will play a very important role in these transformations uh, to climate change. And this is also on part that made me as an investor even more excited about that this is not just in one area, wildfire, but it can be adopted to 
all areas to agriculture to urban heat and also which is a huge topic at the moment energy efficiency heating signatures of building knowing where to where to improve uh, to improve heating so um, happy to see more of that um, what's next for you what are you ha what ha do you have your sights on more is coming next May already. So next May we are launching our second satellite or second camera, and this is the first commercial camera. So we already have a few customers lined up there. We're going to, to sell the data, provide it to, to projects like the NOAA Data Alliance. And in 2024, and we are already going this mass production in our office, we're launching our first eight cameras, providing two times daily data. And it's very already very, um, Good, good input for our customers who, who currently use planes for forest fire observation, for example, and that we can help there. And with this, we are tightening this global real-time observation in 2026, 2027. Obviously, I'm uh, really looking forward to what's to come. Thank you very much, Thomas. Thank you, Felix. Everyone who is interested, reach out to me. And now, now you're allowed. <laughs>